Fenty, Rihanna's fashion company, lasted only four years despite her enormous fame, enormous beauty line of the same name, and financial backing by the largest fashion company in the world, LVMH. But what went wrong to sink the titanic of celebrity fashion brands? The story for Fenty, aka Fenty Maison or Fenty Couture, actually began really far back in 2014 when she filed for trademarks for several different areas of retail, enough for a whole lifestyle brand. This did get a tiny bit of buzz simply for people curious as to what she was about to do, with names like Vogue Australia speculating and accurately predicting that she was going to start her own fashion company. However, this wasn't widely reported on, so largely flew under the radar until 2017, when the company was technically founded. Rihanna was known, and is still known, for wearing incredibly niche designer clothing and pioneering new talent, even to the extent that she had her own TV show about it, Style to Rock, and she won the Fashion Icon Award from the CFDA in 2014. So there was definitely a demand for a Rihanna fashion line to come out. She'd even been guest designing at many companies, starting with Armani Jeans in 2011, then with River Island, which is a high street shop in the UK in the 2010s, Bologna Blahnik for who she did shoes, Dior for who she did sunglasses, and Chopard for who she did jewelry for. But especially after the success of her Puma collaboration and then appointment as head of women's wear at Puma, where she had success after success for the company, there was massive demand for this. She also won awards for her design work, like with the FN Achievement Awards in 2016, where she won Shoe of the Year for her Fenty Puma trainers. And in the clothing side, she had a very successful Autumn Winter 16 fashion show at New York Fashion Week for the Fenty Puma line. So it cannot be understated how successful she was starting to be as a designer and how much demand there was for her to have her own line. But no one really had a clue what they were about to see. On the 10th of May 2019, Rihanna announced the launch of the Fenty Fashion House on Instagram with this post announcing her financial backer of LVMH, the new logo, and the fact that it was the first new brand by LVMH since 1987 with Christian Lacroix, who itself had seen some pretty major financial troubles. Fenty was immediately extremely highly anticipated following this Insta announcement. Rihanna was at the absolute height of her fame, adored by the world, and a respected fashion consumer as well. People expected high fashion looks from Rihanna the person because of the look she was able to turn herself, along with now the quality and the accessible range that the name Fenty had come to represent. LVMH was very behind this brand, and so was Rihanna. She had invested about 30 million euros of her own money in in-kind contributions, which basically means she didn't put money into the venture, she just put a value on her fame and used that as capital, while LVMH actually did invest 30 million euros in cash, just to have the majority share. The whole concept for the brand was that curvier women could find something for themselves within the luxury market. So in concept, it was announced with the same ethos that the well-known Fenty brand was already standing for in Fenty Beauty. Because it is important to note that this came well after Fenty Beauty was launched in 2017, which if you do want more information on, I do have a whole video about Fenty Beauty on my beauty channel, Underskin. And it came well after Savage Fenty, which was her lingerie line that was launched in 2018, both of which were extremely successful by the time that Fenty Maison was launched with Fenty Beauty specifically completely disrupting the beauty industry on a global scale by introducing foundations for the widest range of skin tones, and Savage Fenty, with their wide inclusive size range and brand ethos, arriving at the perfect time to benefit from the fall of Victoria's Secret. Both of these brands are still profitable and successful today as billion dollar businesses, so it is likely that because of the colossal sales seen with both at the time, and with Rihanna showing a talent for design with all of her collaborations, that LVMH would see the Fenty brand as a bankable name for the luxury market. This makes sense in theory. Accessible luxury is a tried and true positioning for clothes and bags, but I think that they missed quite a lot with how they approached the brand from even this early on. If we use the very basic four P's of marketing, so promotion, product, place, and price to break it down, we can see how a simple brand analysis like this one could have warned the company that the business was doomed to failure from its conception. Starting with the largest, and in my opinion, the most important of the four P's, promotion, which really started with the Instagram post, which was a good success, as was this small advert that the company came out with that showed Rihanna in a variety of the clothing that would be available when the pieces were officially launched and then come into stores. 
This was then followed by the official launch party, as shown in this video by Louis Prichon, which got a good amount of social media buzz. Perhaps not as much as they expected, but a decent amount nonetheless. The party was held in one of the pop-up stores set up to promote the label, and present were influencers and well-known industry people like Louis Prigent, Bernard Arnault, and Susie Menkes. The pop-up store looked phenomenal on social media, and I remember that this image specifically was used a lot for promotion, and these sunglasses specifically were a talking point at least amongst my friends in London. But it was the concept of the party itself that was the most obvious sign that something was wrong with the marketing of the brand. This was an exclusive party setting, meaning that the general public was held outside, away from being included, and there was nothing to coincide with the party for the general public to enjoy outside of what the celebrities and industry insiders posted online, which really wasn't that much. Savage Fenty and Fenty Beauty were successful because they were inclusive. Savage with their wide size range and Beauty with their wide skin color range. Accessibility had become the ethos of the larger Fenty brand, but the way that they launched Fenty the Fashion House was just not accessible at all, which was confusing to the brand image. Furthermore, in this same video by Louis Prigent, he explains that Fenty didn't have a fashion show debut and instead chose to only debut with this industry party. In fact, Fenty would never conduct a catwalk presentation to promote the brand at all, insisting only on social media marketing to explain the brand to the public. And for the life of me, I can't figure out why they would make that decision. A fashion show is a phenomenal way to reach an audience, especially with how much social media buzz it can catalyze simply because, unlike the party, there are many shareable images and videos that come from a show that people at home can critique and enjoy, involving them into the event. And yes, most of the life of this business was during the pandemic, but many, many companies still put on fashion shows through video format on the Fashion Week schedule. Whereas this short ad was really all we got from Fenty. So I really don't understand why the company wouldn't want to increase brand awareness in a way that still feels conducive to their accessible brand ethos, especially if they were to do it like Maureen Sir did with her show in a sports venue or how Diesel invited all those students specifically to make it more inclusive. So effectively, the introduction of the brand to the public was a little bit of a failure. In fairness, they really did try to remedy this inadequate launch by doing this University of Westminster corset dress challenge to reach a wider audience, and they had Rihanna wear Fenty everywhere and anywhere, trying to get it into the magazines, almost like product placement. But because she was the face of the brand, it was a little obvious and it didn't really seem organic. As it happened, generally they banked very heavily on Rihanna's star power for the launch, which is definitely a risk. I also seem to remember that the shoes and other bits were seen on a few celebrities like Bella Hadid, Cardi B and Lady Gaga, and in this video by Black Femininity TV, they bring up the point that it was perhaps because award shows were cancelled due to the coronavirus outbreak that they lost out on having Rihanna or possibly other celebrities wearing the garments on the red carpet for that kind of further promotion, if that was a strategy they were going to implement, though honestly, it doesn't really seem like they were. Instead, Fenty was getting praise from the industry that at least to me felt like it was purchased by LVMH's incredible weight in the industry. For example, they had glowing articles in magazines like Elle and Vogue, magazines that were both largely funded by LVMH's advertising euros. Really, even though it wasn't a total flop, there wasn't really anything about the promotion of the brand that was hugely successful. Mostly, in my opinion, it looked just like they didn't actually know who they were trying to market the brand towards. If they wanted an exclusive fashion label, it would have been much easier to call it something else to separate it from the inclusive ethos of the Fenty brand. This brings us to the second P, product. Fenty had planned to launch with women's wear, men's wear, shoes, jewelry, and eyewear. Though the men's wear never came to shops, all we actually got was this promotional video that I'm aware of. This is a huge product offering for a young brand. Most start by specializing in one thing and grow the business from there, like Fenty Beauty with foundation and a few other bits that they started with, or Savage Fenty with lingerie. So by starting with such a wide product range, they effectively treated what was supposedly a luxury brand like a celebrity release in Target, thereby devaluing the product offering. Focusing on too many things at once makes it seem like there isn't enough focus on each individual product to make it as the high quality luxury item that they were marketing it as. And quite honestly, 
And that's heavily reflected in the lookbook because the product offering was a tad bland, widely disliked by critics, and she and her team didn't actually design many of the looks at all and were said to be a series of her, quote, greatest hits. Though the shoes were, in the later part of the label, designed by the award-winning Amina Mouadi, who would very soon go on to have her own shoe line that is still today very successful. And actually a lot of the shoes that were in this, especially those wraparound ones, have been duped by many, many other brands. So the designs were not bad, even good design in some products. But if you look at the lookbook images from the collection, each individual look was just nice. It's not good, it's not bad, it's just nice. I do like the bum bag coat, it's a cool look, and the sunglasses as well, and the trousers I guess were very commercial. But not one of these things screams Fenty. I wouldn't know any of these looks were from Fenty by looking at the cut, colour, or whatever, if I wasn't told who they were by. And not one of these pushes the boundaries enough for it to be worth talking about. Which is really quite surprising, knowing that LVMH hand-picked individuals from the Louis Vuitton and Celine design teams to help design the collection that we were eventually introduced to. But honestly, I feel like I could go into a store now and pick any of these clothes up. Even back in 2019, when I saw the collection for the first time, I felt that. By pushing it as this celebrity luxury line, they really needed it to be groundbreaking in order for it to gain respect in the fashion community as a luxury offering in order for it to be talked about enough to trickle down to the masses, which is exactly what Kanye West did with Yeezy, and something that Victoria Beckham did not do with her label, though she has gone on later to say she probably wouldn't have started the label if she knows everything that she knows now. Yet despite all of this, everything that I've said, Fenty still was the winner of the Urban Lux Award in 2019 from the British Fashion Awards, and personally I don't really understand why they were the winner. I'm sure somebody disagrees with me though, let me know if you do disagree in the comments. Because really, if promotion told us that they didn't know who their customer was, product told us that they didn't know who Fenty was. However, one thing that they got really right was the third P, place which refers to literally where the product can be purchased. I actually have no issues with the retail locations it was stocked in. They had their own website and pop-up stores all across the states, so really for an early brand, I think this was solid and accessible in a way that worked with the larger Fenty name, and it worked very well with their target market as well. Especially on the idea that it was a see now, buy now model that meant that they could benefit from the initial buzz that comes with a product launch and a product drop. However, with the last P, price, is where I see much more so mistakes being made. Their primary audience was women in their early to mid 20s. So when the collection was made available with the prices in the hundreds for basics and thousands for jackets, there was a lot of backlash from their target market who simply couldn't justify paying those prices for the product available. Previously, in her design work with High Street or Diffusion lines, the price was reflective of the worth of her Fenty name, whereas accessories like shoes, sunglasses, and even jewelry for luxury houses were also in the accessible range because these products have longevity that may justify a higher price point for some. But in this luxury clothing space, people simply wanted more value for their money than Fenty was able to provide, given that they aren't a heritage brand with decades of marketing bringing up the brand value. That explains why the sunglasses and shoes of Fenty were able to sell out and even having wait lists at one point, while the clothing actually never did. This price positioning alienated the original Fenty customer and effectively told them that they were no longer good enough for the brand that the public had helped build with Fenty Beauty, which had a mid price point. So by changing this price point just for one facet of the Fenty name is a very ill-advised price positioning for their brand. But with all that I just said on the brand ethos, brand positioning, pricing strategy, and product offering, just having the place side of the four Ps as the only wholly positive aspect, it really isn't enough for the company to be redeemable as a business. With all of these mistakes, it led to really mediocre sales and they were barely mentioned in the LVMH sales report for 2019 and simply weren't mentioned in their 2020 report. Really, this plan is so bad that I'm led to believe that there was next to no actual market research or planning that went into this 60 million euro venture. 
even without the infinite industry knowledge that LVMH has, I, I feel like this is pretty obvious. In my opinion, they would have seen much more success with clothes if they had tried to be Michael Kors on purpose, like Telfar does now, or just simply started with a smaller product range, maybe just with shoes or bags, and growing from there as she did so extremely successfully with Fenty Beauty. The alternative though would have been to have made the promotion bigger, have a surprise fashion show with some kind of stunt to grab attention like the Coperni spray from last season or the the plaster jackets, I forget who the designer was for that, that literally just showed. And then they could have had these basic pieces along with some shocking pieces to grab the attention of the public, especially if they had an open to all fashion show. So naturally, Fenty actually never had a second collection per se. They did keep doing their online drops for about a year, but they became less and less frequent until they eventually stopped posting Instagram updates in 2020 and have since privatized the page and stopped posting on their YouTube channel in August of 2020. Eventually, they cut their losses in 2021, discontinued all the remaining stock on the website to 50% off and declared Fenty closed or at least on hold for now because they blame the closure on the pandemic and how hard it was to keep a business during that time, which I obviously don't buy at all. It's very clear to me that this was just awful planning, which industry insiders were too scared to point out. LVMH is obviously a huge force in fashion, so speaking negatively on them can mean less freelance work for individuals and less marketing budget for the companies that have to champion these brands. Even Susie Menkes, who is famously a very harsh critic, not usually swayed by big money, was mildly positive about the collection on launch. I actually personally think that Fenty could easily come back as a luxury label if they were to plan it a bit better and perhaps start with just bags, sunglasses or shoes. I, I really could see that being successful in the future. Maybe they bring on Telfar Clements to be the head designer. That would be incredible. But all in all, I think this was just a drop in the bucket of Rihanna's business empire, and I don't think the failure was down to her at all. She was placed in a business that was doomed to fail because they weren't able to do a brand analysis before launch or before designing to understand who their customer was and to understand who Fenty was too. Going against the public image of your brand is almost always bound to end in failure. So it's baffling to me that a giant like LVMH would allow this to happen or not see this coming. All in all, I'm happy that she has Savage Fenty and Fenty Beauty to fund her personal style because I like seeing her personal style, because even with Fenty clothing gone, I'm always excited to see what she's going to wear, even if it is in the middle of the Super Bowl. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe and hit the notification bell to see more videos like this one. Make sure you check out my Fenty Beauty video on my beauty channel because I'm really proud of that video. And if you have a few extra coins, check out my Patreon, which is linked below.